It's not just cultures that are different between the East and West, it's the disasters too. Let's take a dive today into what makes the East a more dangerous place for earthquakes. Imagine two earthquakes, both registering a magnitude of 7.0 on the Richter scale. One strikes in the heart of California, the other in the bustling metropolis of Delhi, India. Now here's the million dollar question. If you had to experience one of these seismic events, which would you choose? You might be thinking, well, aren't all earthquakes of the same magnitude equally dangerous? It's a fair assumption, but as it turns out, the answer is a bit more complex than that. Join us today as we embark on a fascinating journey through the world of seismology, uncovering the surprising truth about why earthquakes in the East can often be more dangerous than their Western counterparts. We'll explore the geological factors that allow seismic waves to travel farther with less energy loss, the societal and structural elements that can amplify an earthquake's impact, and the crucial role of public awareness and preparedness. So buckle up and get ready to have your assumptions shaken up. By the end of this video, you'll never look at earthquakes the same way again. Despite being less frequent, earthquakes in the East can often be more dangerous than those in the West. This surprising fact might seem counterintuitive at first, especially when we consider that regions like California and Japan are often associated with more intense seismic activity. However, the truth is that the danger posed by earthquakes is not solely determined by their frequency or magnitude. In fact, a closer examination of the geological, societal, and historical factors reveals a complex interplay of elements that can make earthquakes in the East far more devastating than their Western counterparts. From the way seismic waves propagate through different types of rock to the level of preparedness in local communities, a multitude of variables come together to create a unique risk profile for eastern regions. This surprising reality has significant implications for how we understand and prepare for seismic events worldwide. It challenges our assumptions about where the greatest dangers lie and underscores the importance of a nuanced, region-specific approach to earthquake risk assessment and mitigation. So as we delve deeper into the science behind this phenomenon, Keep an open mind and get ready to have your preconceptions about earthquake danger challenged. The insights we'll uncover may just change the way you think about seismic risk, no matter where you call home. At this point, let's explore the geological, societal, and historical factors that contribute to this counterintuitive phenomenon. By taking a closer look at the complex interplay of elements that shape earthquake risk, will unravel the mystery of why earthquakes in the East can be more dangerous than those in the West. To understand how seismic waves propagate differently in the East compared to the West, we need to take a closer look at the geological characteristics of these regions. One key factor is the age and composition of the rocks through which the waves travel. In the eastern United States, for example, the crust is composed of older, harder rocks that have been around for hundreds of millions of years. These rocks, such as granites and metamorphic rocks, are dense and tightly packed, allowing seismic waves to travel through them more efficiently. When a seismic wave encounters these hard, dense rocks, it can maintain its energy and travel greater distances without losing much of its strength. In contrast, the western United States is characterized by younger, more fractured rocks, these rocks, such as sedimentary layers and volcanic deposits, are less dense and have more gaps and cracks within them. As seismic waves pass through these materials, they lose energy more quickly due to the increased scattering and absorption of wave energy. Imagine a wave machine with two sections, one filled with tightly packed, dense balls, and the other with loosely arranged softer balls. When you generate a wave in the dense section, it will travel farther and maintain its shape better than the wave in the looser section, which will dissipate more quickly. This difference in wave propagation has significant implications for the potential damage caused by earthquakes. In the east, a seismic wave can travel hundreds of miles from its source, still carrying enough energy to cause significant shaking and damage. 
This means that even moderate earthquakes in the east can be felt over a much larger area than a similar sized quake in the west. So the next time you hear about an earthquake in the eastern United States, remember that the older, harder rocks beneath the surface are allowing those seismic waves to travel farther and maintain their destructive power, even if the quake itself is not as large as those typically seen in the west. How about this time, let's turn our attention to something else, like the societal and structural elements at play. One of the most significant factors is the difference in building codes and infrastructure between eastern and western regions. In areas where earthquakes are less frequent, such as the eastern United States, there has historically been less emphasis on designing buildings to withstand seismic events. This means that many structures in these regions are not built to the same standards as those in more earthquake-prone areas like California or Japan. The consequences of this difference in building codes can be seen in the aftermath of earthquakes in eastern regions. For example, the 2011 earthquake in Mineral, Virginia caused significant damage to buildings that were not designed to withstand seismic forces. The Washington Monument, located nearly 100 miles from the epicenter, suffered cracks and had to be closed for repairs. Similarly, the 2010 earthquake in Haiti devastated the country's infrastructure in part due to the lack of seismic-resistant building practices. In addition to building codes, population density and urban planning play a crucial role in determining the impact of earthquakes in eastern regions. Many eastern cities such as New York or Mumbai have high population densities and older infrastructure that may not be adequately prepared for seismic events. In these densely packed urban areas, even a moderate earthquake can cause widespread damage and loss of life. To illustrate this point, let's compare the potential consequences of an earthquake in a densely populated eastern city like Dhaka, Bangladesh, versus a more prepared western city like San Francisco, California. In Dhaka, where building codes are less stringent and urban planning is often haphazard, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake could result in catastrophic damage and numerous casualties. In contrast, San Francisco, with its strict seismic building codes and regular earthquake drills, would likely fare better in a similar-sized event, with fewer buildings collapsing in a more coordinated emergency response. This comparison highlights the critical importance of considering societal and structural factors when assessing earthquake risk in eastern regions. By understanding the unique challenges posed by population density, urban planning, and building codes, we can work towards developing more resilient communities that are better prepared to withstand the impact of seismic events. Hold on, before we move on, where in the world are you watching us from? Let us know by leaving a comment down below. Oh, and don't forget to hit that like button as well, so that we know how these types of things are something you enjoy and that we're doing a good job at it. Public awareness and preparedness play a vital role in mitigating the impact of earthquakes, particularly in eastern regions where the risk may be less well-known. Education and regular earthquake drills are essential tools for ensuring that communities are ready to respond when a seismic event occurs. This lack of public awareness and preparedness can have serious consequences when an earthquake strikes in an eastern region. The historical record is filled with examples of devastating earthquakes that caught communities off guard. One of the most notable examples is the New Madrid earthquakes of 1811-1812, which struck the central United States with an estimated magnitude of 7.0 to 8.0. These earthquakes were felt across an area of more than 50,000 square miles and caused widespread damage to buildings and infrastructure. The New Madrid earthquakes also had a profound impact on public perception of seismic risk in the eastern United States. Before these events, many people believed that earthquakes were primarily a concern for western regions like California. The New Madrid earthquakes shattered this misconception and brought the reality of seismic risk in the east into sharp focus. Despite this historical wake-up call, public awareness and preparedness for earthquakes in the east remain a challenge. Many communities lack the resources or motivation to prioritize earthquake education and drills leaving residents vulnerable when a seismic event occurs. To illustrate the importance of public awareness, let's recount the events and aftermath of the 2011 earthquake in Mineral, Virginia. 
This magnitude 5.8 earthquake caught many residents by surprise, as they had never experienced a significant seismic event before. In the aftermath of the quake, there was widespread confusion about what to do and how to stay safe. Some people evacuated buildings unnecessarily, while others failed to take appropriate precautions. The mineral earthquake serves as a stark reminder of the need for ongoing public education and preparedness efforts in eastern regions. By raising awareness of seismic risk and teaching communities how to respond when an earthquake strikes, we can help to minimize the impact of these events and build more resilient communities in the face of future seismic challenges. Now let's take a global perspective and examine how seismic risk and preparedness vary in different parts of the world. In South Asia, cities like Kathmandu, Nepal, and Delhi, India face significant seismic hazards due to their location in active seismic zones. Kathmandu, for example, is situated in a valley that has experienced devastating earthquakes in the past, such as the 2015 magnitude 7.8 Gorkha earthquake. The city's rapid development, often without proper building codes, has led to a high level of vulnerability. Similarly, Delhi lies in a seismically active region and has a history of damaging earthquakes. Despite the known risks, many cities in South Asia face challenges in implementing effective earthquake preparedness measures. Factors such as rapid urbanization, informal settlements, and limited resources can hinder efforts to improve building codes and raise public awareness. In contrast, Japan serves as an example of a country with a high level of earthquake preparedness. Japan's strict building codes, regular earthquake drills, and advanced early warning systems have helped to mitigate the impact of seismic events. The country's proactive approach to disaster risk reduction has been shaped by its long history of devastating earthquakes and the recognition of the importance of preparedness at all levels of society. As you consider these global examples, ask yourself, how would your own city or country fare in the face of a major earthquake? Are there adequate building codes and infrastructure in place? Is the public aware of the seismic risk and prepared to respond? The answer to these questions can vary greatly depending on where you live. While some cities like Tokyo have invested heavily in earthquake preparedness, others like Kathmandu face significant challenges in mitigating seismic risk. Ultimately, the global examples of seismic risk and preparedness underscore the importance of understanding the unique challenges and opportunities in different regions of the world. By learning from the experiences of cities like Kathmandu, Delhi, and Tokyo, we can work towards building more resilient communities that are better prepared to withstand the impact of earthquakes, no matter where they may strike. We've explored the surprising truth about why earthquakes in the East can be more dangerous than those in the West. By examining the geological factors, societal and structural issues, and public awareness and preparedness, we've seen how a complex interplay of elements can amplify the impact of seismic events in eastern regions. We've learned that the older, harder rocks in the east allow seismic waves to travel farther with less energy loss, increasing the potential for widespread damage. We've also seen how differences in building codes, population density, and urban planning can leave eastern communities more vulnerable to earthquakes. And we've explored the critical role of public awareness and preparedness in mitigating the impact of seismic events. But understanding the risk is only the first step. It's up to each of us to take action to prepare ourselves and our communities for the possibility of an earthquake. This means learning about the seismic risks in our region participating in earthquake drills and advocating for stronger building codes and infrastructure. So, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on what you've learned in this video and consider how you can apply this knowledge to your own life. Ask yourself, what steps can I take to better prepare myself and my loved ones for an earthquake? How can I contribute to building a more resilient community in the face of seismic risk? Remember, earthquakes can strike anywhere at any time, but by understanding the unique risks and challenges in different regions, and by taking proactive steps to prepare, we can work towards a future where communities are better equipped to withstand the impact of these powerful forces of nature. As we wrap up this exploration of earthquake risk in the East, I'll leave you with one final thought. 
Did you know that the new Madrid seismic zone in the central United States is capable of producing earthquakes as large as those in California? It's a sobering reminder that seismic risk is not confined to any one region and that we all have a role to play in building a more resilient world. So let's take this knowledge and use it to make a difference. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you stay in the loop with the latest in the world of science. Until next time, stay insanely curious.